My girlfriend wanted to make a pair of wings for uh, an upcoming steampunk convention. So I thought I would help out with some of the mechanical side of it, and then she could worry about the actual visual design of what the cover of the, the mechanical parts would look like. So what I did was I looked around online, and because I was looking for steampunk specifically, I came across Abel Fox's uh, instructables on the, on the wings um, he, I assume, made. Um, and they look great. They, they, you know, had a good style, look, good mechanics, all that. And Abel Fox referenced that the inspiration came from Rachel's instructable. So went and took a look at hers and she's got some great videos some great photos and all of that looked great. The, it looked, it looked like something I could do. The, the movement was nice. It wasn't as complicated as some of the ones that fan out. There was a lot of good movement where it retracted. So I thought this was a really good design to, to go with. So I want to give those two credit for um, you know, pointing me in the right direction to, you know, in the beginning for that um, and for being a good, a good model to work off of. But the, the thing that still remained is I wanted to make a small version before committing to a larger one. So my first idea was to get... Uh, wooden coffee stirrers. Like, they're tiny. I I'm sure there's similar things in craft stores that are meant for making small models or something like that, but I just didn't know what to look for. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this video, to kind of share all the little things that I, I found uh, in the process of doing this, so that people would have a better idea what to look for. Because uh, if you don't know what the name of something is, it's really hard to Google it. So like I said, my first idea was wooden coffee stirrers are small, they're flat, they're wooden, you know, easy to drill through, easy to work with, and pretty much, you know, close to what I was, you know, what the final product's going to be. Um, and then my next thought was, well, uh, these brass fasteners to hold paper together and, you know, they push through, they splay on the other side, and then if you need to undo them, you can just, you know, un unbend them and pull them right back out. Really easy to work with. But the problem was, go when I went by the local office supply store, uh, the brass fasteners are all pretty much paper size. They're made for, you know, a three-hole punch sort of hole, that bigger, uh, you know, five, six millimeter, whatever hole. Um, so those weren't going to work. Um, my next idea was to go by uh, the local craft store, Michael's, and see what they had. So um, what I found there uh, was uh, these little guys. So these I found in the jewelry and beading section. Um, they're eye pins, so it's basically a little loop and a stick. and. I'm like, well, it's not exactly what I wanted, but maybe I can just poke them through the hole. I need something tiny because the holes are going to be really tiny. And uh, I can poke them through and maybe I can just bend them on the other side. Now, what happened with these, though, is in the process of bending them on the other side, uh, they, they ended up um, breaking the wood or bending the wood or just doing not so great. So this is what I came out with. Um, now, you'll notice I ended up replacing those pins with what I ended up finding, and I'll, I'll get to those in a second, but this is the version 1.0 that I came up with, um, and actually, let's see, pretend the stick is where it's going to mount to the backpack or, you know, whatever you're going to end up mounting to, and you really only need to move, and you'll see this later on too, you only re really need to move by one of these two bottom points, and that's where you would hook, um, that's where you would hook, you know, whatever... Uh, you grab onto the to make your wings flex or whatever. So you see, there's some movement, but with the those eye pins, they poke through. It restricted the movement, and it didn't work so well. And you see, I, I reinforced the holes that I broke with some uh, electrical tape. And in, in general, you know, it, it doesn't collapse all the way. I couldn't really take the eye pins out and really make it work that well. So uh, again, that's you know the 1.0 version not exactly what I was looking for, so I thought, well, I'll start over again and we'll do it better this time. So, here's what I, here's what I ended up with. So, I got the coffee stirrers. They're cheap. They're even cheaper online, but I found them really cheap, you know, at the local grocery store. Um, I got, basically, it's sort of like a pin vise, only you don't 
you can't remove the actual drill bit. I keep it in with my, my duelers, screwdrivers, because it's sort of the same shape and everything. But, so it's basically this. Um, it's just a little tiny drill, and it's got a little, little, little pivot head, so you can brace that against your uh, palm. But you basically just poke it in, you can turn it, and like I said, it's pretty much just like a pin vise, only it's not a vise since you can't open it and remove the bit. Uh, this was labeled just drill, and it was by a company called Bead Landing, I believe. It might be a Michaels exclusive. It was in with the beads and jewelry stuff. It's for drilling little holes in beads. So, you know, if you if, if that's the area you need to look in, you know, your local craft store, beads, whatever, then that might help. Um, but then the, the coup de coup d'etat the Coupe de Grassi was in the jewelry section they had rivets so I was looking everywhere for these little tiny rivets and they had this multi-pack and I didn't think rivets were going to be great because I didn't think I'd be able to pull them back out um, but when I asked the guy if they had any that weren't in a multi-pack where I'd have to buy 50 packs just to get the tiny ones couldn't find any but we ended up over in the scrapbooking section and it turns out brass fasteners have another name and of course this isn't going to focus yeah, maybe if I do that anyway so maybe you can see that uh, these are labeled mini brads um, I completely forgot that there are such things called brads and they're basically the same as a brass fastener only I guess a brad is just something that pokes through uh, and these were in the, like I said, the scrapbooking section. These have little star heads on them, but they're extremely tiny. They are, I don't even know if I can do this. Um, they are extremely tiny and they are tiny enough. And you can see that little tiny one there, but they're tiny enough to fit through the hole that this drill will make, which is small enough to, uh, work with those, um, with those wooden coffee stirrers. So that's what I have, and that's what I replaced in the prototype. Again, you probably can't see them too well because this thing's not going to focus. Um, but you see the little shiny deals. I got the star ones. They had uh, just regular round ones, but I got the star ones because uh, the round ones were the same price for half as many. And not that I need 200 star head brads, but you know, why why pay twice as much? Uh, they also had flower shapes and all that, but really wasn't concerned so much about the design as uh, just being able to poke through that hole. And you can see on that side, they're just kind of splayed out. Um, but, you, you know, just with your fingers, you can undo them and pop them back out and, and redo them if you need to. So, let's see if I can do one of these. Uh, now, here, I'll show you again. This was version 1.0 um, the movements restricted here uh, it, it can't push this rod any further that way and it won't go down any further just the mechanics are such that it can't move you know in as far as it needs to I mean you could do that you might be okay wing wise with that and you might be okay with a length like that but if you get it to work really well this is what you end up with and again this is just going to be the post that the uh, that would be your backpack or whatever and this I used a uh, little bit longer ones but this goes all the way closed and just pushing on one of these two on the bottom it goes all the way out and uh, it stretches uh, pretty far so I'm pretty happy with how that turned out and again it's not focusing but and the only thing when you do this, this little guy right here is going to be the one that's going to be your biggest adjustment, probably. the The rest is kind of, kind of affects how far the wings are going to go, you know, how they're going to look, the movement, whatever. But that little guy right there is the last one that I did, and it seemed to work best that way. So we're going to try to do something along those lines. I mean, we're going to try to do that again. Um, now somebody. I think it was a cute fox had a diagram where they had basically traced on paper 
Um, I want the wing to come out to here and come down here and come over here. And then they use that to gauge the distances now, or the lengths. Now, again, this is just for a model, so it doesn't really matter what scale it's in. Really just kind of want to get the movement and everything down. So it's going for quick and easy. But in all of these, all of the designs I saw, those two guys and all the other ones that were of a similar design, you basically have the two boxes here. And this one, I've seen them as short as that, and I've seen it as long as I have, and I've seen this box different sizes, so it all depends on the, the shape of the wing or you know how you want to do it. I haven't messed around with all the different variations, so I can't tell you, well, if you want it to stretch out longer, do this. If you want them to be skinnier here and fatter here, do this. You're just going to have to play around, um, you know, or maybe do some 3D modeling or you know something along those lines to get an idea of what the different parameters do. Or you can just look around and you can see the people that made ones where the box was only that deep up here, uh, what it ends up looking like on theirs. But uh, my initial thought was that it would work better building from the backpack or from the support out. Um, but I pr I'm pretty sure that the better way to work is from outside in. Um, so once you, again, I, th I think the model's helpful because it'll end up, um, it it'll end up helping you flesh out your design and then figuring out, oh, I make this shorter, I make this a little longer to get the, the end result that you want. Um, but I'm just gonna, what I did was start with just one whole stick here and one whole stick here. And usually it looked like these tended to be a little shorter on a lot of people's designs. Uh, but again, I, th I think it can be whatever you want. So just for simplicity and just to have something to start with, I did one full stick here and one full stick here. So I'm going to take one there and one there. And I'm going to mark that I'm going to want a hole there and I'm going to want a hole here. All right. So then somewhere down this way, some indeterminate amount of space down here, I'm going to want another one. So I'm going to basically want to make a rectangle up there or, you know, this, this rectangle, we're going to work on that first. So I'm going to want a hole there. And I'm not going to do this super precise. Actually, I guess uh, for the sake of if I'm going to make uh, two wings, um, I'm going to pretend like I'm doing this. So, you know, I'm going to try to make it as similar to this one as possible. So I'm going to do another hole there. All right. So we got that guy. And I think that's the hole there. And oops, that one goes there. Not that it matters at this point because they're really just the one hole. Okay, now this guy, um, we're going to want a hole here. So that's the end of that one. Now square it off. I know I could use the lines on the table, but I'm just going to be quick and dirty here. Um, but I'm going to make them roughly rectangular. Oops. Uh, actually, I forgot. What I want to do is do it a little shorter. So I'm going to still make this rectangle. I'm going to do that there. I'll do that there. Make a rough rectangle there. So, I'm going to make a hole here. I'm going to make a hole there. And then I'm going to cut it right here. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm covering the camera a bit. But I basically marked the hole on this guy underneath there, and then I marked a line there where I'm going to cut. And then over here, I'm going to want a hole. Right there, I'm going to want a hole there, and then I'm also going to want a hole at the bottom there. All right, so that's the one going that way. And just while I got it, I'm just going to snip this guy right 
there. All right, so there's that, there's that. So I got these holes marked, I got these holes marked, I got that hole marked. Now, I guess it kind of doesn't matter. Well, no, I guess I need this guy now. All right, so again, gonna have a hole at the end here. And then I'm going to connect that one and that one. Oh, sorry, I already did that one. Okay, so there's that guy. There's that guy. All right, so I got the stick and the stick and the stick. And that hole and that hole and that one marked. And then the last bit is basically where these are going to meet. And I cut this one off. So what I did was I basically just did a, I did these basically at 90 or 45 degree angles to, you know, my workspace. And then I put this one here. And again, I'm just doing this one rough. So and say hi to the sirens outside. Um, that's our uh, local volunteer fire department doing their job, so we're happy for that. So I'm gonna mark those. And when you actually go to do, you know, a backpack or something like that um, for a frame, then this is, you know, you're gonna want to do something a little more specific. But what I did was do those bits first, and then that last little guy. Uh, is going to be a pain. Uh, you might not be able to see the little hole here, but I guesstimated right there uh, after putting everything together, and it wasn't quite right, so I ended up moving it down just a little bit, and that gave me the little bit extra movement that I was able, you know, that, that made it work better. So I'm going to do a little screwdriver, screw thing, drill. Yeah, that's what they're called. There. I'm going to do a little drill here. that one I'm gonna do a little drill here and do another one down here and one here Okay, so that was that one, that's that one. Okay, there's that. There's that. here all right I need some of those brads and as always I start putting them in my mouth and then I realize it's gonna be really hard to talk breads in my mouth. So it looked like they weren't going to be small enough, but they're just the perfect size when you get both of them through. All right, 
so. There's one. There's another one. And this guy. goes there. Almost done. Sort of. So it looks like I got them pretty close to the same size, which you would think wouldn't be too difficult with something so small and easy to work with, but I'm trying to hurry to. Alright. And sorry, I keep going off camera. Hard to work around this thing. Alright. So... Pretty close to right. So you got this, and that that moves pretty good. But you need to anchor that last one to really get a good movement. So we're gonna take a piece, and I'm gonna drill the first hole, and then we'll figure out where the second hole needs to go. So, I did that much, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to close this down and get it, it doesn't want to go all the way there, like this V is still open, so I'm off a little bit with one of these. Um, I think it's this guy, maybe. But just for the sake of finishing this video, I'm going to just pinch it down there. Uh, I'll pinch it. Actually, I, I see from my original that it was a little further that way. I think that one's going to get in the way. I think this one needs to be a little higher. It feels like the pressure is going that way. Maybe. But what you can do is you can just pinch it in a spot and use your finger as a pivot and figure out where it's you seem to be able to get it close to the, the amount that you want. So I'm going to just call it right there for now. And I'm going to try to hold it. And I'm going to mark on there. And the mark on there. And then I'm going to use a little drill. And I'm going to put the last bread in. Alright, so I got the last one in, and here's your backpack stick, or that's your, your brace that's going to be on, you know, whatever's mounting on your back. Now, when you get these two where you want them, where it works right for you, you can cut these sticks off, and it's got pretty good movement. You can move by one of these, 
And it, you'll see di you'll see people online that have ones where they have their thumbs hooked into loops that are attached to strings that pull on these or straps that just pull them up directly or whatever. So there's a lot of different ways to attach to one of these two, probably this one to uh, actually get the you know the hands to move the wing motion and you know of course you can do it electronically or something like that but pretty good movement see it goes out pretty far and comes in pretty close now mine is still not closing all the way not like the other one did and what you can do is to figure out how you want it to move you push on it and you feel where it might be giving some resistance where like the sticks would break if you kept forcing it and it feels like it's on this joint right here so what I'd probably end up doing is moving that maybe up a little maybe even down a little but you, what you can do at this point too is you can take that out and just like we figured out where the last thing goes now see it closes a lot better and the holes are down here but where it crosses is actually up here so it looks like up there might be better and actually that could probably well maybe not I don't know uh, it was square down here rectangular but moving it up there looks like it works better so let me see what happens just moving the brad up there and we'll see if I'm talking a lot of nonsense or if it actually works to some degree but you have so many points fastened and in motion here that the others kind of hold everything sort of in place while you figure out where the resistance is still. Oh, no, that made it worse. Now it's not closing here. I think I was doing that wrong. So anyway, that's that's something you can do um, to try to figure out where, you know, where you're getting hung up and the stick is bugging me. So I'm going to break that off just to get it out of the way make it a little bit easier to work with. See, it's getting a little jammed up. So anyway, you get the general idea. That's how to make the basic frame and a little bit of how to, uh, you know, figure out where to put the pieces. And if you're making models, um, maybe a little bit about uh, the different pieces you can use. Um, again, wooden coffee stirrers, uh, brads, from the uh, from the craft store uh, scrapbooking section, they come in a bunch of different sizes. They come in a bunch of different colors and shapes and everything, whatever works for the model. And then this thing, which was just labeled drill. Um, again, a pin vise might work. Pin vises tend to be like this as a metal shaft, but then you can unscrew them and put different drill bits in them, or um, you know, files or you know whatever else you have. But this was a cheap little thing uh, in the jewelry section of Michaels, meant for uh, drilling holes and beads. So that worked for me. And uh, again, thanks to Acute Cat and uh, Rachel for putting up your stuff and everyone else whose uh, pictures I looked at. But those were the, the two that kind of got me started. So I wanted to give them a little hat tip. And thanks for watching.